Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux, and this is not another installation video. Uh, this is something that I've wanted to like put out there for a little while. Now I have put out something similar to this, uh, but I want to kind of go forward with the idea of how I set up my Firefox browser. Now this may not be interesting to everybody, but we're going to talk a little bit about search and we're going to talk about privacy. Now, the elephant in the room is this is an older version of Firefox. Uh, Firefox ESR is the one I usually use because it is in the Debian packages. And when you are looking at the version, it is the extended support release 128.14. It is exactly the same for Trixie as it was for Bookworm. So there was no update. However, let's go ahead and close this. Firefox ESR 140.2 came out one week ago. So the question is, are we stuck with 128 until next cycle, which would be two years from now? No. Uh, from my understanding, there is going to be an update for this particular package in Trixie on September 16th. So we only have to wait, let's say, another two to three weeks for there to be an, a major update in the Firefox ESR packaging. Now I'm under zero illusion that Firefox is popular. It is not. It is scraping the bottom when it comes to market share. It's a shame, but that's just the truth of it. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be five people watching this video because everyone's like, oh, I use something else and that's fine. But if you are a Firefox user, you might wanna take a look at how I modify it for my own needs, so for my workflow. Anyway, this is the way it looks like out of the box. I'm going to go and just show you the settings for about a second or two because I'm not going to keep these settings. Uh, the default search engine is Google. That is how they make the most, uh, you know, if not all of their money, the lion's share of their money, nearly 90%. Okay, and then you've got other search shortcuts here. And that's all I'm gonna say about the settings so far, okay? About five or six months ago, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and move on to, the, uh, to this video. Uh, th about five months ago, six months ago, I did this video, A Better Firefox, and I am using this particular um, betterfox user.js file. Now we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I, like I said, I already did this video and I will have a link in the description below. There will also be a link about Better Fox. I want to briefly go over just one more time. Um, I have the user.js file. Let me go back actually. So it's the user.js file right here that what you're going to want. Now make sure you read a little bit after restarting Firefox you might want to include the uBlock origin with the recommended filters. I'm not gonna do all of that. However, uh, make sure that when you, if you decide to, uh, that you follow the procedure here. Now, I'm gonna go over, is it here? Yes. So I have this user.js file. The only thing that's different about mine as opposed to the one that you're going to see uh, at that GitHub, um, is the section that says my override or sorry yeah my overrides i have added a few overrides including you know the feature tour and, and things like uh, uh, i don't want addresses and credit cards to autofill so stuff like that i i want to make sure that and and i don't want top sites either that's another thing what is top sites look so, okay so if i open up the browser all this stuff, when we implement this user JS, all of this will be gone, all of it, okay? So let's go ahead and close this. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our, right here. We're gonna go to the Thunar and we're gonna look for the .mozilla directory. Oops, I need to do two more things. One is I need to make sure that I have no instance of Firefox running anywhere. So if you're looking at a different tag, I'm making sure I don't have anything else running and I don't. 
The other thing is I want to grab that user.js. It just happens to be right here in my documents just for ease of use. And then I'm going to go back to the .mozilla and then the Firefox. And within this default ESR, um, ex this directory, I'm going to just control A and delete everything. So basically it removed everything and I'm only going to paste the user.js. Now watch what happens when I open up Firefox again, which is super B. Okay, it populates everything, but none of the other stuff is there any longer. And uh, like Pocket is gone and a lot of the other kind of, um, I don't want to say bloat because there are people that actually like some of these features. I just don't happen to be one of them. So I've removed a lot of the things that I, th I think is extraneous uh, and makes this a lot more, I don't know, streamlined. Let me move this over to its own tag. I'm going to put it out back over at one. And you're going to see this is a lot different in terms of experience. Not a lot of stuff going on over here. Now, I am going to the settings. It has changed in terms of privacy. It goes from, you know, standard to strict. And the telemetry has changed dramatically because of the user JS file by the Better Fox project. So let's move on because what we're going to talk about next is search. Clearly, Firefox has a multi-million dollar reason to keep Google as their default search engine. Um, they could not function without it, apparently. Now, what I don't care for is the privacy elements to using Google as a search engine. Not everyone's going to care about this. I happen to do. So that is what the rest of this video is going to be about. Um, basically making your uh, search in Firefox a little bit more private. So when you do type in something like baseball into the Omnibar, you're going to get Google results. Now we can debate whether the relevance of Google's search results are getting better or worse. Um, I will leave it to you to make that decision. Uh, but overall, we know that there is tracking. We know that there is um, very little privacy when it comes to your search and the pro profiling and so on that goes with that. Let's go ahead and close this and go to tag two. Now, as you can see, I'm running TrueNAS scale and there are six applications that are running on this particular uh, TrueNAS instance. One of those applications is searching, and that is what I was talking about. I really have been using the heck out of this. What is searching? There are, there's plenty of videos out there that talk about that, but basically what it is, is a self-hosted, no user tracking meta search. It uses a bunch of different search engines, and you're gonna get kind of interesting, you know, good results based on the fact that you're, using not just one search engine, but you're using multiple search engines, okay? So let me close, let me go here and say web UI. So now when I do this baseball uh, search, it's going to show, um, you know, results from multiple, like I said, multiple search engines, Brave, DuckDuckGo, Google, Start Page, and so on. You can set it up with, you know, with your preferences and you are, you're basically drive, you know, you're the one that's in charge of the search engine. So I like that. As we talked about before, the default settings um, for Firefox shows that Google, well, let's put up here, Google is the default search engine, as well as you have the ability to search a number of other uh, search engines. I mean, I don't know that anybody else does this, but if I like just say at DuckDuckGo or DDG space and then type baseball, I'm going to get a DuckDuckGo result, a search result. OK, now I don't know that I care for. Let's go back here. I don't know that I care for any of these keywords. In fact, I know that I don't. That's why I, I'm suggesting changing them, removing things like Amazon. Maybe you want it. I don't know. Um, but in a document that I have on my Butterscripts uh, project, 
in the browser's directory. And again, links in the description below, like I keep saying, okay? It will kind of advocate for what I'm suggesting, and that is to change your shortcuts to something that makes more sense. And using Vim, like colon B is for Brave Search, colon D for DuckDuckGo. Now, why am I including Google Web? Because at times it makes sense to do so. Um, especially I find myself using the colon GN and the colon GM uh, more than some of the other stuff, okay? Um, it, it's just the way my mind works, I guess. May I don't know. Uh, regardless, um, uh, my default is going to be this private meta search searching. And uh, again, we're going to get to that. There is a manual way to configure your Firefox. You don't have to use a script. But for me, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to use a script and let it like remove those uh, default search engines that I don't want and include all of these searches with the appropriate um, with the appropriate shortcuts. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. <laughs> this script that is has been written does not need to be used in order for you to manually change your search engines. And you may not want to at all. Maybe this video is going to be completely useless for most people, okay? But for me, I am going to de demonstrate it regardless. So I'm gonna close Fire Firefox. Uh, yeah, I don't need, I, that can stay open. And I'm gonna be in my Butterscripts browsers. Again, I only need one file. Actually, maybe I should just show you that real quick. Uh, so. Let's go custom, like if I'm right here, same thing. If I just need that one file, it's this custom underscore search dot sh. Okay, that's all you need to do what I'm just about to do. You don't have to get clone the entire uh, project. Don't have to, just can get this one. All right, and uh, go ahead and close this again. And let's go to dot custom search.sh and when I run it, it's first gonna ask me, do I want the searching uh, privacy focused meta search engine? Now I'm gonna say yes, okay? And it's gonna ask me, do I want a public instance or do I want my custom instance URL? Now I'm gonna show you my, IP, my local IP for this particular project but I have like a custom domain name that I'm using, like search.justaguylinux.com. That is not something that is active, guys. So don't go looking for it, okay? That is just a, an example. So I am gonna go to, and it is going to be http colon slash slash 192.168.254.0. One eighty six colon three zero zero five three. Is that right? Hopefully that's right. I think that's right. And I'm just going to hit enter. Um, it's going to give you a. It's going to give you a um, kind of an error. It's not really an error message, but it gives going to give you a heads up on something. And that is it. It added the colon B for Brave Search, colon D for DuckDuckGo, and the, the like. Now I'm going to tag two, open up the browser, and see what we got. Now, let me say that if you go to the search, there may be some extraneous like leftovers from, uh, let's just say Wikipedia or eBay or something. It might be there and you may have to manually remove it. Uh, there are definitely some policies that uh, Firefox has that may not allow, especially established Firefox. Um, uh, if you've established your Firefox and it's not a clean install, it may end up being uh, some extraneous like search shortcuts here. Doesn't mean that these aren't going to get in, but uh, there might be some extras here. Just letting you know. 
Okay, so let's open up uh, um, and see when we type in baseball now. It should, yep, and it does. It's actually hitting our uh, local searching uh, instance that's being hosted on our TrueNAS scale, which I totally dig, okay? Um, if we go to DuckDuckGo, it's going to, so colon D, baseball, same thing. It's going to give you, and by the way, Duck, you can make DuckDuckGo your, you know, your default. It's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's very good search. Now, the question is going to be, why did I include all those Google um, shortcuts? And here's the reason. Sometimes it works out for the better. If I say GW, which is the Google web, you're going to see how it is different than just a normal Google search. If I say baseball here, and it gives me just text results, nothing else, okay? It's only going to give me a list as opposed to all, which is like the normal result that's going to have a lot of extra stuff on it okay i just want my results and if you go to more web you're going to see the same thing but this is a way to shortcut it and you can actually have this as your uh, default search as well just make sure that you're using that um that udm i mean let's make sure that uh you know what i'm talking about it is this url and it is again it is in the um it is in the documentation uh, that, that will be in the description below. Now, um, actually I'm on two, aren't I? So there's that. The one that I use quite a bit is, like I said before, Google News, but I also use Google Maps. So colon GM and then just say Atlanta restaurants. And it's gonna give you like results the way I wanna see. Uh, it's like, oh, that's near the airport. Okay, cool. That's what I, that, you know, that's the one I wanna look at. So anyway, that gives you at least a better shortcut if you're like, if you're like me and just want to go up to the Omni bar and type in, you know, Google Maps and then hit something else. Now, if you've gotten to this point, I so much want to convey my appreciation. Uh, this won't be for everybody, and I get that. Um, but at the same time, I am so grateful to the community who has put me over the 10,000 subscriber mark, as well as over the 1 million uh, video views. I guess that's the way to, to describe it. I have over a million views on my on my channel. Um, it... it is insane to me, frankly, that uh, that so many people have kind of like watched this channel. A couple, three years ago, whatever it was, yeah, it was a little bit more than three years ago when I did my first video, I had no idea that, uh, and, and granted, 10,000 is not like a massive number, but for me, it is far exceeded my expectations, far and away. So thank you. That is what I was trying to say. All right. Until next time, see ya.